Hello my darling viewers and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. So for today's video, I have decided that I am going to go ahead and discuss the queens of the tarot deck. So there are of course four queens in tarot and each of them are associated with one of the suits of the tarot. And to me, I feel like energetically, they are very much embodying different fairy queens from different mythos and legends across all of the, across the pantheons of worship in ancient times, across cultures, and really all through different aspects. Uh, because we do have fairies associated with all different elements and each of these fairy queens or queens of tarot is associated with her own element. I'm going to go a little bit over associations for each of them. I'm going to show you the cards from the Llewellyn tarot deck because it was one that I had on hand and I think that the illustrations on these cards are quite lovely. So we're going to take a look and get dig down deep. <laughs> so the four queens of tarot are the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Swords, and the Queen of Pentacles. I'm going to start with Wands. And the Queen of Wands looks like this. And she is a queen associated with the element fire. She is associated with creativity, passion, skills, inspired work, talents. She's very much that fiery energy of a queen, a queen who is going to inspire and a queen who is inspired by her life and by those around her. And fairy queens that kind of embody this energy are any fairy queens associated with the sun and with fire. So I would think of people like Bridget of the Eternal Flame or I should say goddesses, like Bridget of the Eternal Flame, Anya, who was originally a solar fairy queen who only later became associated with the moon. Rhiannon also began as associated with the solar, with the sun, and later became associated with the moon. All of them kind of have this fiery energy about them. And because of that, they have very Queen of Wands energy, in my opinion. And especially when we look at Anya and Rhiannon in their stories, we have them very tied to motherhood in some way. Anya is known to be the mother of a race of half fairy, half human offspring. Many, many fairy human offspring. She had many affairs. And she is a fertility deity. And in the case of Rhiannon, she, her birth of her son, Pradari, is a huge event in her life and it's very important so that's kind of the energy i'm getting here and the fairy queen association with this card next we're going to move to the queen of swords this is the queen of swords and the queen of swords is the element of air and she is i'm gonna show you the card a little bit closer she is steely resolve and a hard-edged nature due to that sword element, due to that air element. It's very fierce. And she is someone I feel suffers no fools. She is a warrior queen. And because of this, her energy as far as fairy queens go is no better exemplified than the Morrigan herself. That passionate, fiery, fairy queen energy of war, that warlike aspect. The Morrigan was also a banshee. She was the crow and the raven, and she was this battle goddess. And I will also say that Maeve has some of these elements as well with the steely resolve and determination, although she has some of the sexuality and sensuality of the other tarot queens when we're looking at that warrior queen energy 
That is the Queen of Swords. She is the warrior queen of the tarot. Now, moving on to the Queen of Cups. That is what she looks like in the Llewellyn deck. And the Queen of Cups is obviously associated with the element of water. She is emotions, intimacy, and she often comes to people to tell them not to fear intimacy, to fear, to not fear gaining a deep spiritual connection, excuse me, a deep spiritual connection with someone else. She is that just completely feminine, watery, emotional energy made manifest. She is any fairy queen that is watery. And she is also associated with dreams because water, the moon, dreams all entwine together when we're thinking of magical associations. And in the case of this queen, I associate her a lot with Morgan in her water priestess aspect. I associate her with the Lady of the Lake, <laughs> very watery fairy woman. Uh, any of the Gareth Anun in general, which the Lady of the Lake would be a member of that particular breed of Welsh water fairy. And also, I would say with Melusina. Because Melusina has a mermaid aspect, as does Anya, I will note. So if you think Anya might have in her mermaid aspect an association with this queen instead of the Queen of Wands. But very much so like Melusina in her guardian of the well slash mermaidenly aspect on Saturdays. That is the energy of the Queen of Cups. She is emotion the overflowing abundance of emotion and she is dreams and visions that we can make manifest in our lives right the final queen of the tarot is the one that has been coming forth to me so much i mentioned this in my previous video when i was talking about one of my previous videos when i was talking about the uh, fairy herbalist archetype. And I actually did an entire blog post about the archetypal nature of this queen of pentacles and how she's been appearing to me a lot in readings and just she'll come up for me. I've been meditating a lot with this card. And as I've been studying herbalism more in depth, this is the queen that's really active in my personal point of view lately and that's what she looks like in the Llewellyn deck it's a very lovely card <laughs> so the queen of pentacles is the earth element she is also therefore associated with money so some associate her with being a businesswoman who is able to capably run and manage a business which there is that aspect to her but when we're looking at my more fairy centric nature when I'm thinking of these things, she is the earth mama. She is the creatrix. She is sensual in everything that she does. She's very, very much of the earth and she wants to connect with all of the natural things in the earth. It's very green witchery. It's very foundational. It's, you know, that being rooted in the grass barefoot. It's very much being at one with all of the elements, but particularly the solidity of the earth elements and letting that hold you. And also in that case, being a nurturer and holding others through being this earth energy. So she is associated with just so many goddesses and fairy queens. We could think of her as a Gaia energy because she is that earth mama, earth mother energy. She is Aphrodite in her se sexual pleasure and procreation energy. She's a very, very fertile goddess energy. Very, very fertile queen energy, the queen of pentacles. She is Persephone in her spring goddess aspect where it's all about abundance and fertility of the land and nature. She is Morgana in her aspects of as healer and as mother. 
Morgana is two aspects that I really associate with this particular queen would be healer and mother because again there's that deeply fertile aspect to this particular queen and other fairy queens include Guinevere and Bloodworth in their May Queen fertility aspects. Both Bloodworth and Guinevere in Arthurian legend and in the Mabinogian Welsh Celtic lore are very associated with Beltane, with May Day, and uh, Guinevere is often told to be going a Maying, which is to go pick flowers in May, especially around Beltane. And this energy is basically a really sensual, loving life, life of the party energy mixed with the nurturing mother and the nurturing wife energy. It's a very powerful energy. And also the other aspect in some decks when they represent animals for the different uh, queens, she's represented by a bear, which Again, it's that mama bear energy. It's very much protective and nurturing as well as fertile and overgrowing in abundance. So very beautiful card, very powerful archetypally as all of the queens are. And if you wanted to relate the queens a little bit more to the two other highly feminine cards in the tarot, the High Priestess or the Priestess, represented in the Luan deck by Caradwen, and the Empress, which is represented in the Luan deck by Rhiannon. I've already mentioned Rhiannon. That is very much, we could see the queens represented here. The Queen of Cups is more of the High Priestess energy. She is that intuitive, knowledge-based energy, the dreams and visions that we would associate with the more esoteric spiritual realms, right? And we could also kind of see this with the Queen of Swords, who is more that, you know, it's again, she's the warrior energy, but air is associated with thought and with knowledge, with memory. So that's more of the High Priestess energy. But the other two queens, the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Pentacles, are more of that Empress energy. They are queens in passion, creativity, sexuality, procreation, pleasure, and fertility and abundance. Whether it's fertility of the mind and of the creative spirit, the fiery fertility aspects, the passionate drive that is probably going to create artwork like with the Queen of Wands or the more sensuous, rooted, earth goddess type of energy that we have with the Queen of Pentacles where she's probably going to produce actual children. They are both rooted in this realm of the physical. I view the Empress as the divine feminine in the more physical nature-based realm, like our realm. And I view the High Priestess as the divine feminine in the more spiritual, the more esoteric, the more astral realms, right? But they all work together to create just this very potent feminine aspect of the tarot. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to kind of weave together where we can get the divine feminine within the tarot and what we can get from each of these cards, meditating on them, having them show up in readings, what it might signal as patterns in your life, and just getting to know ourselves better through the cards, through meditating with the cards, through doing readings. The tarot is an incredibly powerful tool. So I do hope you've enjoyed this Fairy Friday Queens and Tarot video. If you have liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whereitwasavalon.life. I will link some tarot and queen and tarot blog posts down in the description box below. And my Discord server and my donations page and my tarot and oracle reading services page are all always linked down in the bottom in that description box. Have a great day. Bye now.